Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of First Kernstown, located in Frederick County, Virginia, on March 23, 1862. Because of the earlier battles, the Union had grown confident of holding the Shenandoah Valley. So much so that the 38,000 defending Union troops under the command of Major General Nathaniel Banks was split up. Union command moved two of Banks' three divisions east, maintaining only a single division under the command of Brigadier General James Shield to control the north end of the valley. On the Confederate side, General Stonewall Jackson maintained his presence in the valley applying pressure to the Union troops. His orders were to keep as many Union troops in the valley, thus depleting Union forces in other locations. This seemed to be working for a while until Jackson's cavalry commander, Colonel Turner Ashby, reported back to him that Union troops were moving out of Strasburg and heading north to Winchester. This could indicate that the Union was leaving the valley. Jackson was determined to keep the Union in the valley and it meant he would have to meet with the Union troops in battle. He forced his men to march more than 42 miles in two days, where they reached Kernstown, a small village just south of Winchester on Sunday, March 23rd. While they were there, the Confederates believed that most of the Union forces had already left, leaving only one brigade behind. Jackson confirmed this error by believing he could see a force that size in a wheat field north of Kernstown. Jackson dispatched Colonel Samuel Fulkerson's brigade along with Jackson's former command, the Stonewall Brigade, now under command of Brigadier General Richard Garnett, to attack the Union artillery positions on the Union right flank on Sandy Ridge. He then commanded Ashby and a small infantry brigade commanded by Colonel Jesse Burke to appear to attack the Union in the middle to keep the rest of the Union troops in place. Meanwhile, Stonewall held back to 5th Virginia with himself in reserve. Fulkerson and Grant moved along the ridge and found the Union on the opposite side of the ridge trying to do the same thing. Both sides raced for the stone wall that was in the middle. The Confederate soldiers won the race, secured the wall, and unleashed a hellish fire on the Union troops. However, things did not go as the Confederates would wish for. For every Union unit pushed back, a new one would replace them. It was at this point that Jackson had began to worry that he had underestimated the Union troop strength. The Union forces did in fact have more troops than Jackson realized. Colonel Nathan Kimball had replaced Shields, who had been wounded earlier in the day, and began to execute their plan. The Union troops had only allowed Jackson's scouts to see one brigade, but in actuality they had three. Kimball was being kept in reserve, while Colonel Jeremiah Sullivan moved his troops along Valley Pike, and Colonel Erastus B. Tyler's brigade was performing a flanking maneuver, engaging Stonewall Jackson's own men at, ironically enough, the stone wall. Once Tyler reached the stone wall, Kimball moved his forces up to support him. The Union attacked the stone wall for more than two hours but could not break the Confederate defenses. Unfortunately, the Confederate forces were low on ammunition and had no additional orders, so General Garnett ordered his troops to pull back. This movement, however, exposed the right flank of Fulkerson's Confederate units, forcing him to retreat as well. During this time, Stonewall Jackson was on his way to the wall with his 5th Virginia to give relief to the Confederates. Seeing the retreating Confederate troops, Jackson became angry and attempted to rally them. Unfortunately, they had given up their position and were not able to retake the wall. All they could do was stall the Union forces long enough to collect the wounded and retreat. Jackson relieved Garnet of command and pressed charges of desertion on him. While the battle was a battlefield defeat for the Confederates, it was a bigger victory for them strategically. The Union had been caught off guard by the attack, and because of fears the Confederates would return, they reinforced the division not only with the two divisions they had pulled out, but an extra division as well, depriving the Union of more than 60,000 troops for their attack on Richmond later. The total estimated losses of wounded and killed were 590 Union troops, 718 Confederate troops. Join us next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.